a confusion may arise that how do we judge by it if we don't have it if we don't have the now the quran confirms that there are remnants of that gospel in your hands whatever you have scattered all over the christian world or in christian libraries from the second third fourth fifth sixth century onwards whatever you have in literature there are remnants and how do we know these remnants are the remnants of the original gospel of jesus christ we know that by looking at the quran because in the very next verse verse number 48 of chapter 5 The Quran categorically states we sent the scripture in truth the Quran by the way wa anzalna ilaykal kitab oh muhammad we have sent down a book upon you bil haqq okay with truth musaddiqan lima bayna yadayhi min al kitabi and we and this book confirms what went before you what went before you of the scripture in other words the previous scriptures this book confirms what went before you okay what does it confirm muhaiminan so this book is actually a guardian over the previous scriptures it is a guardian over the previous scriptures in other words that's why fahkum bainahum bima anzal allah therefore oh muhammad you judge by what god has revealed upon you let me start with a modern source I'm not going to give you my interpretation. I'm going to look at modern Muslim scholars and I'm going to look at the classical Muslim scholars and any Arabic speaking Christian and if there's a Muslim who's going to be honest will admit I even watched a recent lecture by Yasser Kadi on his Sira uh, series on the Bra- Prophet of Muhammad the Sira on Zainab and he says his own mouth Al Tabari the greatest commentator in Islam Al Tabari so I'm going to look at Al Tabari I'm going well I won't look at Ibn Kathir now because that'll be too much time but guys pay attention I'm now going to read the study Quran the study Quran it's a modern Quranic translation produced by Muslim scholars some are converts to Islam and <clears throat> this is the first Quran that has study notes it's called the study Quran Let me read how they explain the word Muhaimin chapter 5 verse 48. And I want to show you how everything Adnan said backfires against them, decimating Islam, destroying the Quran, exposing Muhammad as an inconsistent fraud, Jesus Christ is Lord. Here, let me read it. Here's their commentary on 548. This verse addresses the prophet directly and describes the book sent down to him. That is the Quran, as confirming the book that came before it, just as the gospel confirms the Torah. The Quran is also described as confirming earlier scriptures in chapter 2 verse 41, mm-hmm. chapter 2 verse 89, chapter 2 verse 91, chapter 2 verse 97, chapter 2 verse 101, chapter 3 verse 3, chapter 3 verse 81. Man, they 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 give more than I did. Chapter 6 verse 92, chapter 35 31, chapter 46 verse 30. They sound like us and yet they're mm-hmm. Muslim scholars. Okay now. The Quran is further described as protector. Muhaimin over the previous scriptures folks notice their interpretation muslim scholar meaning that the quran testifies to the validity of the earlier scriptures and serves as their trustee keeper and guardian and then he put in parentheses tabari zamakhshari they're getting this from tabari zamakhshari protector is also one of the names of god in the quran The idea of the Quran as guardian and keeper of previous revelations is consistent with 5 verse 41c and chapter 5 verse 45c which report that the prophet ordered the sentence of stoning for the two idolaters as well as retribution for killing and injury in order to reestablish the original Torah ruling on these matters. When it means original Torah they're not saying crap. It was there in the Torah but they discarded it. So Muhammad is saying, "No, no, no. It says it in your Torah, this copy, do it." Okay. When the prophet judges between them, that is the people of the book, this verse enjoins them to do so in accordance with what God has sent down, which most major commentators understand to mean that he should judge according to what God had revealed to him, namely the Quran. Alternately, alternately, it can mean that he should judge the people of the book according to what God has sent down to them. Bam! Wait, 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 Muslim scholars. You haven't been speaking to Adnan, have you? You haven't consulted him. Shame on you. He's God's gift to apologetics. Alternately, let me repeat it again. 
Alternately, it can mean that he, sh he should judge the people of the book according to what God has sent down to them. Use their books to judge them, which he actually did. Namely, their own scriptures, which is what the prophet explicitly does in the incident discussed in verses 41 to 43, that he should not follow their caprices, meaning that he should not rule in accordance with their unwarranted digressions from or alterations to their own law, as discussed in verses 41-47. Now, watch this. Although verses 41-47 taken together, guys, please listen. Although verses 41-47, we start at 43, they're starting at 41. Taken together suggests the validity of Jews and Christians judging by their own scriptures and thus the continuing spiritual guidance to be found in those scriptures this verse goes farther, says even more than that, mm. by asserting the providential nature and differing religious communities and their distinct laws and practices. Indeed, the verse does not pertain only to Jews and Christians, but rather makes a universal statement about all religions. For each among you, we've appointed a law and a way, indicates that different religious communities may have different ritual and legal formulations specifically appointed for them by God, and that each religious community is independent of the laws of other such communities, even if the essential truths and principles of the religions are the same. End quote. David, does this sound like these Muslim scholars think Mohammed means to expose what's corrupt in the Bible or remains intact? Um, no, and it, it'll be difficult to find anyone who who actually just based on the language that's used, who isn't trying to force an interpretation into the Quran would ever come up with that meaning, especially since it completely contradicts everything else Allah says. And so once again, we can conclude if, if that's what Allah was saying, he was so hopelessly unclear that even Muslim commentators don't understand what in the world he's saying. They don't understand that he, he's only saying what Anand came along and said, you know, 14 centuries later. David, it gets better. You ready? Mm-hmm. And actually, what's ironic, the Muslims do say this word Muhammad, they're all over the map. Mm -hmm. Regarding Muhammad, Allah says that he brought down the book to you, O Muhammad, believing in the books that came before it and a witness to them that they are the truth from Allah. Wait, 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 Tabari, what? The Quran is a witness to these books that they are the truth from Allah, faithful to them and a protector to them. The root of Haymana means to protect and watch over. That is why it is said when a man watches over something and protects, it has, he has Haymana over it. The present form of the verb is you Hayman, and the noun is Haymana. Now watch what he admits. Based on what we have mentioned, the people of interpretation have differed. Guys, pay attention. Anand trying to make it seem that his interpretation is the most obvious meaning, the only meaning possible. But Tabari, <coughs> Al Tabari, I keep omitting the definite article, Al Tabari says, the people of interpretation have differed in their explanation of this word. For some said that it means to be a witness. So then he quotes those that say it's a witness. Now notice some of the authorities he cites. Narrated by Al Qasim, narrated by Al Hussein, narrated by Hajjaj. Narr narrated Ibn Juraj, narr narrated by Mujahid, who rated that Muhammad, Muhammad over it means the Quran is a protector and a witness and a confirmer, a confirmer of the previous scriptures. Ibn Juraj and others said that the Quran is a guardian over the previous books, so that if the people of the books mention an issue that was also mentioned in the Quran, it is to be believed, otherwise it will not be believed. Now watch this. It was narrated by Muhammad ibn Sa'd, narrated by his father, narrated by his uncle, by Ibn Abbas, we brought down upon you the book, in truth, confirming what is between your hands from the book, refers to the Quran, which is a witness to the Torah and the Gospel, and confirms both of them. So here they're saying, Muhammad means it witnesses, it bears witness that the Torah and the Gospel are truth, and confirms their validity. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to go to the other opinion, because I'm almost done with this. Others have said that Muhammad means to confirm, meaning believe in. Of those who mention this opinion are narrated by Yunus, narrated by Ibn Wahab, narrated by Ibn Zayyid, who said that Muhammad means to confirm it. 
Everything Allah has given in the Torah or the Gospel or the Psalms, the Quran believes in it. One more time. Everything Allah has given in the Torah or the Gospel or the Psalms, the Quran believes in it. So it believes in it. It confirms it. It doesn't expose corruption to it. Now I'm adding those commentaries. Now, here's the one that's really the nightmare. End of story, Adnan. Your career is over. Here's the end of story. Others have said that we brought down upon you the book in truth, confirming what is between your hands from the book, refers to the prophet of Allah. Of those who mention this opinion are, narrated by Al-Mathni, narrated by Abu Huthayfa, narrated by Shibl, narrated by Ibn Abu Nujay, narrated by Mujahid, who stated Muhammad over it refers to Muhammad, who was entrusted with the Quran. Guys, end of story. What do I mean? If Muhaymanin refers to Muhammad's role over the Quran. Guys, notice what Adnan just did. Here's the, the end of Islam. Adnan wants to say the word Muhaymin means that the Quran tells Jews and Christians which parts of the Bible are corrupt, which parts are intact. Adnan, you just buried the Quran because according to some, Muhammad is Muhaymin over the Quran. Meaning it's referring not to the Quran being a guardian over the Bible, but Muhammad's role in guarding the Quran. So if Muhammad means that the job of that entity that's called Muhammad is to expose corruptions to a specific thing, Adnan, you just admit the Quran is corrupt, it's been destroyed, distor uh, distorted, it's been shredded like the Quran says, and Muhammad's role was to say, this part of the Quran remains intact. That part is corrupt. It's not from Allah. Thank you, Adnan, for now proving that your Quran is corrupt and Muhammad was sent to show which parts were corrupt, which parts are to be rejected, which parts are not from Allah, but maybe from Satan, like the satanic verses, verses if your definition of Muhammad is correct. This is why we keep saying these guys are apostates. They're apostates. They do not realize it. Sam, according to the Quran, if a person rejects what Allah and Muhammad have said, are they Muslims, according to the Quran? No. Chapter 4, verse 65. It's over for you. In fact, if you're living at the time of Omar, he would behead you. He would chop off your neck with the sword. That's mm -hmm. chapter 4, verse 65. Read Ibn Kathir's interpretation of what Umar did to someone who didn't submit to Muhammad completely. You cannot accuse Adnan of being ignorant of this. He just read it in Arabic. Arabic he knows exactly. what it says in Arabic. He knows that the Quran is affirming not some corrupt Torah and God, not some remnants. He's confirming the Torah and the gospel that still exists during the time of Muhammad, which Adnan is saying have already been corrupted and you know, they're just pieces of truth left. This is amazing, man.